name is John. I'm a recovered alcoholic and drug addict. Today, I just uh, was contemplating in in my own life and uh, in my own uh, recovery and and the life of the garden, the temple, so to say. And I was just like realizing my proclivity to what I would call backsliding. Like it's it's there's there's something that happens when we become free and and you see that kind of picture in the bible where you have the children of israel uh, being being slaves and being driven by slave drivers and in its horrible living conditions and they're under the tyrancy of the owner and then they uh, are released from that and they're in the desert and there's this tyrancy uh, that they put on themselves. They become their own tyrant. They're complaining. They're they're whining and crying and and almost like want to go back. There's a slave mentality that they have to walk out of and into the new promised land. And um, and and that's kind of what I wanted to talk about, like when I get into the promised land is everything milk and honey is everything sunshine and rainbows and lollipops it's like i made it into the promised land i'm free and so what happens when um i become free i believe my freedom and this is like real this is real life is that i became fat I was never really fat. I might have been a little chunky my whole entire life. I was like a little bulldozer, my mom would call me. I'm like a two, four-year-old, six-year-old bulldozer. Get in my way, I might give you the shoulder because I'm pretty stocky. My wife calls my body type hunky chunky, Um, you know. So, but when I got free of drugs and alcohol, I literally gained like 15 pounds um, over the normal cruising weight that I, I live at, which I thought was shocking because all of a sudden, if you if you know the fighting world, I became a heavyweight. And I'm like, I'm not heavyweight material. Uh, well, how am I sitting here? And 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 in freedom, I, I had the tendency to get fat. And and I and I, I I know I'm talking in a in a physical sense, but I'm referring also to an emotional and a spiritual sense. Um, so I would call it backsliding. And um, kind of a picture that I had was, um, you know, like when I used to get ready for football uh, preseason, we'd go jogging, and so we'd I'd start out really good. Like I hate jogging, by the way. I start out pretty good. I got a good pace going. And I know I got to do it for an amount of time. So I'm trying to pace myself. But even in my head, my pace never seemed to like go the full distance. So at some point, um, and I want to say near the end of the run, but it was typically near the beginning of the run, I would start like my jaw would drop. I'd start panting. And I'm like backsliding off the pace that I've actually set for myself, which isn't super high because I actually want to ascertain it. But I start backsliding, so to say. I start like going from a good jog to like kind of like at the end of it, I'm limping along. And and now I'm looking for shortcuts to get home, to get in the shower, to flop myself down on the couch, get a power shake in me and and and, and just get on with the rest of the day. This is the, the that's the worst part of my day. Um and and then when we got into football one of the things I noticed is uh, in, in preseason, especially everybody's like a rookie again. And so there's a lot of whistle blowing. There's a lot of like mistakes being made. Uh, probably half of it is due to the rust, but half of it's due to like lack of cardio. So when you, when you, when you're not fully fit, you, you make mistakes. And, and I remember one uh, preseason uh, it was, it was junior football. So, uh, there was a couple guys that were uh, way better than the norm because they were cut by the Red Blacks and were joining our team. And um, I, I played defense on the on the inside half. So my job was I could blitz, but I did a lot of in, in the middle coverage. Uh, but then I was contained on the outside as well. And so some of you are laughing because you don't even know what the game football is. But um, the <laughs> I hope this all makes sense. 
So I'm on defense. There's this guy that's a running back and he's fast. Like he he's like he was actually in Sports Illustrated from Florida for 100 meters. So he was like legit fast for a high school. Like I, he was out of high school, but college. And so he 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 did a he he got the ball and he would run out to the side and he he tricked me twice in a row. Like so he did a little stutter step so I went inside and I missed him. Like I was looking for the big hit for the glory. And I totally missed him. And he blew by me on the outside. He did that twice. And the coaches were like, this is the play. We're going to let him do it again. We are telling you he is going to do this. Like he's going to do the exact same thing. Your job is containment, not inside. There's somebody doing that. So I know the play. I know what I'm supposed to do. I've been coached. To t- like, this is exactly what's going to happen. I've already made the mistake twice and the, the the play goes on. The running back gets the ball and he does his little stutter step exactly the same. It was, I did the exact same mistake. I, 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 I diverted. I, I, my, 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 my progress actually went back to, to how it was again. And, and it's kind of like this proclivity that I have to even know the play, to know what to do. And, and I keep making that same mistake. Um, even, uh, another example was, uh, golf. And so I, I've never been great at golf. It's a game that you have to have hours and hours and hundreds of hours of practice to actually be good at it. Uh, it's a game of minimizing mistakes. And I've always liked the game. I've never put my full effort or hours into it, uh, but I got pretty good at it. And so I've never had lessons. And to get better, you typically need some lessons. You need somebody that's better than you. So I had a, a guy teaching me a little bit on how to do it. So you, you do a swing and he kind of rips it apart. And he's like, well, you're doing this with your hips. You're 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 using your arms too much. You're surprised. You're it's surprisingly how little you need your arms. But but I, I'm doing more of a baseball swing. So he kind of corrects my swing, and and I'm starting to hit the ball. And I'm like, man, I'm like pro here. Like I'm a, I'm on the verge of like hitting the PGA, maybe being up there with uh, the top of the world. Like I, I like this guy fixed my swing. So the next time I go golfing, I get like three holes in and I'm like crushing it. And then I either I'm getting a little bit tired or I'm getting a little bit too confident, but I reverted back to using my arms a lot more. And I reverted not using my core or I, I just reverted back to how I was used to doing things. And so this brings up the, the topic of backsliding. And 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 if you're like me, you have the proclensity per, per you have the tendency to to go backwards, not fall down necessarily, uh, because maybe you've been free of addiction. Maybe you've been free of, of the prisons that you've been in. Uh, so you're not falling flat on your face, but you have this tendency to ease up or backslide or or make decisions that you didn't really want to do in the first place. Because we get to this point where maybe life has been so bad for you. Maybe, you, maybe you've come kind of from where I've come from, that uh, 15 years of addiction, I, I got to the point where I was trying to not wake up. I didn't want to hurt myself, but I just didn't want to wake up. I didn't want to live in the reality anymore. I couldn't live, and, and I was disappointing everybody around me. I was letting myself down. I wasn't in control. I, I had no choice but to use um, I probably wouldn't have defined it in those words at the time, but I couldn't do what I wanted to do. I couldn't, I couldn't use how I wanted to use, and I couldn't, I wasn't even keeping my word even to myself. Uh, I would go out and not come back for days. And I just felt like the disappointments that I had been causing, it's just better that I'm not here, so to say. So I went on uh, a bender to try to take my life. I just kept waking up and I'm in this terrifying situation of of months of keep waking up and and not being able to live in psychosis and it it was a very terrifying place and so i got into a place where i believe they were going to teach me to live it was a treatment center um but but you might not have had that type of terror 
Uh, but your terror is no different. If you keep making the same mistakes with your food or with relationships or with your adrenaline and you're controlling, fixing, chaos, creating all of those things, your life has built up uh, to, to be unsuccessful in, in many parts of your life. And you want to make those changes and you feel like you're just bankrupt spiritually and, and physically and, and emotionally. Like it's just like you're done with this way of life. Well, recovery offers us a new way of living, a new life on the spiritual plane of things. So we're not going to use our, 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 like, it's not led by our physical or our emotional or our soul. It's led by our spirit. And so to be led by my spirit, I have to connect to God's spirit to give me the power over the life that I was living and walk me into a new life powered by the spirit of God, not powered by the spirit of alcohol or cocaine or whatever. Fill in the blank for you. What in your past was powering you is what the results that you're going to get. So if you keep doing the same thing over and over, that's kind of this jail cell prison addiction that we're talking about. Um, what I'm talking about is the backsliding part to get back to there um, and, and living out of out from under the power of God um, with the freedom that we've been giving given. <clears throat> so um, we, we make this decision to to get help. Um, we, we realize that we're powerless over the things that uh, we have no power over. Um, the 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 options of choice are gone um and and it's been controlling me and my life is totally unmanageable in all areas and I've come to realize that alcohol and drugs or relationships was actually my solution to manage my life to give me uh breathing room to give me this ease and comfort that I've been so desperately looking for and and so I get to that point and maybe you've got to that point and and it's kind of like this realization and now I have to make a decision. Um and and so we're led into this spiritual way of living and understanding that God is going to do for us what we can't do for ourselves and and I need to come into that um relationship and so I come to believe in the power of God. I don't have the power of God necessarily, but I'm ready to give up my life for a new life. And then we go into this third step prayer where it's this decision to turn my will and my life over to the care of God. And at the very core of, I believe, me um, and you probably is this insatiable need to be cared for. And so most of us care for ourselves. We take care of our needs. It's it, Most of it's very basic and easy. Doing that causes a, a heaviness and a weight and a, and a responsibility that isn't ours to carry. So we look for escapes. We look for maybe it's the phone. Maybe it's the, the, the new relationship. Maybe it's the new job, whatever it is, uh, the new car, the new clothing, whatever it is. Um, we're looking for those things to ease the tension of carrying the responsibility that's not ours. And that's, you know, really running our lives. And so I get into this decision to turn my will and my life to the care of God. There's a, a prayer that we pray. And, and I pray it, Jesus, I offer myself to thee to build with me to do it, thou please. And, and so we're, we're actually turning my will. So that's my thinking and my life to the care of God because God cares. And he's the adult. I'm the child. Um, I get into trouble when I become the adult and I take all the responsibilities of caring for myself. This is what I'm trying to give to God for he cares about all of my needs and he's going to shape me and mold me into his image, not the image that I've made. I actually have to abandon that and 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 let God rebuild me from the inside out. So I was always under this belief like you can't hand in your card. Like I've made this decision and and just a decision doesn't do anything. Um, but I have the willingness to act upon that decision, which I go into inventory. So I go into inventory to see where I'm playing God. I come out of consent with fear, the enemy. Uh, in the book, it says fear is the corrosive red thread that shot through our very existence. It's it's the fabric of who I am. I've consented with fear through my wounding, my experiences, and 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 I've come into agreement that fear is my now slave driver. It puts me into motion, 
Um, and, and, and so I'm coming out of consent with fear by doing this inventory and coming into consent with the love of God. And so where God's perfect love is, it casts out fear. And so now I'm an agent of God. I'm a, I'm a, an object of his love and grace and mercy. And that's really the freedom that I've always wanted is the freedom from the responsibility of caring for myself. Um, and needing the the breathing room or the substances or the the toys to to give me breaks from, and that's where I get the addiction from. So so I was always under the belief that once I do that work, I can't really go backwards because I'm already there. I'm on the shore of faith. I've I've already made the decision. I've made the commitments to to follow through with that. Like I've actually done the work to stop playing God. Um, but but here's the problem is that I've seen countless times this, what we would call backsliding into taking back my, my, my card, taking back the God card. No, I know I gave it to you, but I'm going to take it back for today. Um, and the proof of this is where we have this step 10 and 11 concept of on a daily basis, my job is to connect to God. And when things crop up, when fear crops up, selfishness, self-centeredness, resentment, when those things crop up, I go to God. I, I pause. I give this to God. I ask where this is coming from. I, I watch for these things on a daily basis. And then I, I make amends I where, where, where I need to. I'm always looking for... Um, how I can be of service to God and to others. And and I'm always checking my relationship with God and how the outside is affecting the inside. So if I'm not doing those things, I would say that I'm declining and not inclining uh, in my relationship with God. I'm not growing. I'm I'm dying. <laughs> What's up? When a, when a plant starts to wilt, um, I'm, I'm not growing, I'm wilting. And so this uh, card that I've given God is contingent on my spiritual condition on a daily basis. And that's what it means by living one day at a time. I don't get sober one day at a time. I have a relationship with God one day at a time. And so I believe that I can get busy. I can get distracted and, and it turns into, I have kind of a touch base with God once every couple days. Um, I'm, I'm taking a little bit, bit of a break of doing it this way. Um, I'm not checking, I'm not doing shoulder checks on a daily basis. I'm just switching lanes. And so eventually I become unsatisfied with the life that God has given me. And so one of the signs is in the big book on page 61, it reads, it's talking about being the actor. And so sometimes I get bored with being the actor. I stop taking direction from the director. I stop being fathered and disciplined and instructed by, by, by my father. Now I want to take that role. Um, and so I stop being the actor and I start being the director. And, and this is what happens as I believe we become free and walking in the land of milk and honey. It, it's it's I start to disconnect with God in little ways. And and that's what I call like backsliding, not falling straight on my face. But this backsliding idea is that the show's not going quite as it should be. Um, if if this person did this better, it would be better for them. If this person would just do these three things, it would be better for them too. But the reality is most of the time, what I think is better for them is actually going to be better for me. And so I can easily transition into the director. And when I start doing the directing, I'm looking, um, and these, these are the feelings. What happens? Usually the show doesn't go off very well. So it, I begin to think that life doesn't treat me properly. It's not fair. I decide to exert myself more. I I become on more occasions still more demanding or more gracious, as the case may be. Still, the play is not quite suiting me yet because not everybody's doing what they need to do. Admitting that I may be somewhat at fault, I'm sure that other people are more to blame. I become angry, indignant, and full of self-pity. What is the basic trouble? Am I not really a self-seeker even when I'm trying to be kind? 
am I not really the victim of the delusion that I can wrest satisfaction and happiness out of this world if only I manage well? And so that's the backsliding problem that I have. I start becoming the manager. I start taking the responsibility. I'm starting to give advice. But the whole time I'm resting, I'm trying to gather satisfaction and happiness from the life that I have. And basically I'm saying, God, the life you've given me is not good enough. Maybe the life that God's giving me is not really good enough, but it's shaping and molding me in in how God wants me to be. Because I'm just worried about today. I'm just worried about the arrangements that are happening today. I'm getting caught up with the results of today and thinking that's going to be the rest of my life. And I'm not happy with it. I'm not satisfied. I'm not joyful. And it's not bringing me happiness. But if you go to the gym for the first week and start ripping muscle, you walk around like you you like I can't even put my arms straight because I always go for the arms first, right? Or leg day, like you can barely walk upstairs. And it's like, what if God has you exactly where you need, but you don't feel it's where you're supposed to be? Well, God's not going to be able to shape you and mold you if you have the sheep on a million hills. And, and, and maybe God has you in a position financially or in relationally where he's taking people away from your life and, and you're feeling all alone and you're feeling trapped and you're feeling like you can't even breathe anymore because it's really coming from an expectation what I have of how the play should go. But if I've given that card to God, then let him just put the put the actors where they need to go, give me my script for the day and forget about the results because the results are none of my business. But I'm trying to wrest satisfaction and happiness out of this world if I just manage better. And so this is how I feel like I can start playing God um, because if I'm not satisfied with where God has me, then I'm never going to be satisfied. And that's one of the fruits of God's spirit is that I actually become satisfied. If I'm connected to God, no matter what the hardship is, I'm still satisfied because I know that God has a plan and a way and that he's He's growing me and strengthening me for the real storms that come along. And all I have to do is just be joyful in it and be full of gratitude and thanksgiving for where I'm really at. Because if I'm not, at that point, then how am I going to be strengthened and and grown? I don't even know how to do that, but that's what I think I know. And that's how I take the guard, the the step three prayer back. I renege on my, my decision and I become the producer and I come at you with like, I, I come from the actor, I become the producer or the director, and then I become the producer. And when I'm the producer, I come at you with roses and shotguns. Because I need you to listen and do these things so that everything is better. And I forget about the satisfaction of just being happy and and not insane like I used to be with a life full of drugs and and debauchery. The, the, The delusion that I come under is, it sounds like this, is life going the way I want it. That's a delusion. Right from my addiction. Is life going the way I want it? Yeah, it is. Oh, it's going great. That means what happens when it's not. And that's usually where I start to digress, where I start to wilt, where I start to assert my will, is life isn't going the way that I want it to or need it to. And then I start being the victim. And then I take over by being the producer and the director. And, I, and then it goes chaotic. And then I'm getting into things that I don't need to get into. And eventually, I'll fall flat on my face. 